<sighs> so it's uh, sort of been a nice day today, I guess. Hmm. I slept in just because I, I don't know, I felt like this week was, um, was going to be, well, just my one therapy meeting Friday, but then before that, mm, kind of like online events happening late at night, so there's not much going on and I can sleep in, then, then I should do that, you know, I should, I should rest and I should sort of sleep in and wake up late whenever whenever I can because um I don't know I feel like the more um the more you rest the 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 better you are it's most important to have good health but I was also thinking you know like well I do have still like a bunch of things to think about like maybe Easter decorations but if not also Oh yeah, I'm at the IFC rooftop as usual. I ran a bunch of errands. Yeah, went to Apple, got the Apple pencil. Um, went to Clarence, got the evening cream. Um, got some vitamins. Um, that's that's about it. Went to Manny's, got some magnesium. Um, now I'm up here. But I was just thinking, you know, like the guard was saying. All these there's this one guard downstairs who says really nice things not the guard down here the, the guard down in my apartment in my new apartment building and he says very nice things he's you know he's always saying very complimentary things like oh uh, you're looking very nice today um, you know like I don't know what he helps people with I think mainly he just presses like he tries to remember which floor you live on like if you live on the 10th floor, then he'll walk into the elevator before you do and press the number 10 in the elevator. That's his main job? Because I don't, I don't see him doing other stuff that, that other guards do. Like, you know, actually catching taxis, carrying boxes, you know, uh, picking up laundry, delivering things from one place to another, like talking to the tenants about, you know, what's going on. Uh, nor is he, well, he speaks with a very heavy accent. And so I can't understand him. Um, I can't understand. I, and I'm saying in Chinese, his Chinese accent is very strong. Just as, just as if, you know, you were living in America, someone had a very strong accent. I couldn't understand. But so this guard, he has a very strong accent when he speaks. So, and it seems like the main thing that he does is press the number in the elevator if he remembers which floor you're on. And, well, God forbid he doesn't remember the floor you're on and presses the wrong number. <laughs> but uh, I think, yeah, he's... But, I mean, he seems mild, though. He's He speaks Cantonese with a heavy accent. I I feel he... I have a feeling he's from Singapore. Um, I think he's nice. I don't know much, you know. Um, but um, he was saying to me, you know, he was... Uh, saying to me today oh I look really I look very pretty or something and I said oh I have so many things on my mind you know like I have to decorate my house I have renovators I have contractors helping me helping me move furniture and boxes around I gotta get a haircut I gotta you know I have new clothes in the mail coming in the mail and I have to go to the tailor and get it get the hem straight I have a ton of things that I actually have to do. There are boxes downstairs. I need to lift them up. You know, fruits everywhere, food all over the place. And um, finally, the this this particular guard he responded. He said, "Oh, I think uh, if you get a haircut, you should just cut a little bit. <laughs> Looks very nice. <laughs> you know, after." After so much, you know, I guess, yeah, I don't know. He has a, I, maybe I heard wrong because his, he, his accent is so heavy. I think, I believe he's from Singapore because I grew up in Hong Kong and this is, you know, where my parents are dominant. I love the United States, but Hong Kong is kind of my little kingdom that I just personally dislike. But um, 
he doesn't he doesn't look and sound like the people in Hong Kong so I figured he's probably from Singapore because he doesn't speak English but you know it's just like I have um I have so many things like to worry about and you know people matter you know your tailors matter to you especially for someone with a small body like me I always go shopping I always need good tailors in every city I live tailors are the most important people because they make your look they make your dress look good on your body a dress could be the nicest dress and if it doesn't fit well then you're screwed when I was living back in New York, there was the best, best Italian la uh, Italian tailor. He was working off Mott Street, um, working off Mott Street, um, and he did all my tailoring for me. Um, I forget his name. It's um, he's done a lot of tailoring for like all the all of the big Hollywood stars. I love him. He did both of my. Um, sear sear uh coats jackets he did almost all my dresses i wonder you know sometimes i ask him you know i wish he could do shoes but he's a really he's an old italian gentleman he works off mott street down in chinatown in manhattan and i just forgot uh what his name was even though i used to visit him almost every other week um, I, I can look that up and find out but yeah so I had one guy in New York I have a, I have someone everywhere it's very important you have to be very very nice to your tailors you have to give them big tips you have to you know you have to give everybody a big tip you need to you know be very 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 friendly to them because you know even though they have simple jobs you know but they help you make you look really good they do the actual work they work with their hands they don't just say random things and press a button you know so yeah but yeah so i'm wearing uh this is a sandro sandro paris top i have um some blue bella no no i have the soli hux lingerie underneath from amazon and then i have the calvedonia italian red and white striped pants this is i'm just running errands today i was gonna go to the tailor today but i feel tired um i'm just you know doing some exercise i have no makeup on not even the sunblock not even the sunblock but i put on more moisturizer so i'm looking okay um i actually used blue orchid oil right here so that, so that, like before I go out, so that if I take a photo, you know, I don't need the, the concealer or even the foundation, but I need there not to be a line here when I smile, which I guess even babies do, but I want to minimize it as little as possible. See, now it's very little. A few days ago, it was more. So obviously it's not the ring, it's not wrinkles. It's the skin, the actual skin. So now I, I've actually put oil on it. Um, so that's my new thing. I don't know why there are people laughing like crazy on the other side. This uh, is blue orchid. Blue orchid oil. You get it off Clarins. And you uh, put a tiny bit on just to make sure it's like extra oily. Um, and so, yeah, I literally... Oh, and it looks kind of rosy. No, I have no no nothing no um i didn't put any charlotte tilbury on today i didn't put yeah i didn't put any uh bronzer it's just a really nice it's just a really nice day and <laughs> um yeah i mean i'm not doing too much uh intensive shopping because my allowance is very limited but also because um i'm thinking of i'm planning well my dad says i should plan on moving back to new york in two years um that's where i like to be that's where they would be very happy for me to be i mean i guess it makes sense too i mean my dad has a small office uh only a small office in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So, 
But I was wondering what I would do with myself after I moved back to New York, where I also enjoy the lifestyle and it's just, you know, more English speaking. You know, I can get excellent Japanese food. I can get, you know, I can like get a burger sometimes, which I miss when I'm in Hong Kong. So I also think it's easier to go on a diet. Living in Hong Kong, living in Asia, you can't go on a diet so easily. It's not very good for people who want to keep a thin body. They don't have all those health foods you get all over the streets in New York or whatever. But um, and I can't live in LA because I'm not a good driver. But I was saying, you know, what maybe my parents don't ask me to think um, what what I'd like to do. What I'd like to do with myself back in New York. Hmm. Are we? I would like to. I told him a few months ago. I have started doing some brand ambassador work, just for random. Random labels, random brands, anything like this watch, or maybe something, some earrings, or maybe a top or something. Um, so I told him about. He asked me what a brand ambassador is. So I explained that to him what a brand ambassador is. Um, but uh, you know, I mean, my 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 mom and dad, uh, you know, they are like. No matter what, they don't uh, divorce. You know, no matter what happens, they don't divorce each other. Um, you know, no matter how they beat me with a stick, they don't uh, disown me. I'm, I'm in there. I'm, they put my name in the will. So, why not? Why not? Also, let me be a brand ambassador. <laughs> like if uh, anything. Anything can happen, you know. I could just be a brand ambassador. Like, why not? You know, it's it's not against the law. I mean, because I could be a brand ambassador for different different things, like not just one thing, but a brand ambassador for a few things. So it wouldn't wouldn't be a problem. Um, then of course I so today I went to so then maybe I would also like to draw a bit so I bought an eye pencil like an Apple pencil because I my my iPad arrived and I went to app walked into Apple today and got the got the pencil the eye pencil that goes with the iPad and then they were very nice and told me about the the apps to use mm, so maybe I'd be a designer but if I'm still pretty for the next. 15, 20 years, um, it would be nice to have photos of myself and then that should that would be ambassador. Mm, that's what I wonder right now. Um, <laughs> you know, I would, um, I mean, I'm, I know I'll be involved with like all that, all the stuff where I, you know, write a little about about the shows, uh, my, about my favorite things, because I, it's what I, it's natural to me, it's, it's good, it's good for me, so, but that's just on the, that's on the side, you know, more, I, you have to do lots of different things, but one main thing, and then three or four different things, um, the main thing should, should be good, like, a as a, as a ambassador. I mean, why not? Or I could also make a design, and it could all be different. I mean, I don't see why why they have a have an issue <laughs> with that. Um, I mean, I know I'm like almost forty two. I know for Asians, it's a bit strange. I don't look like I'm forty two, but I am. Um, but if this is how I am when I'm forty two, then you know I. I might still be okay by the time I'm like, I don't know, 55. So I'd, I'd like to do something, something where I can see people and, and look pretty. Um, I really have no makeup on today. Um, but um, 
yeah, I look better without without makeup sometimes. On certain days, I look better without the makeup. And like, I haven't washed my hair, but it looks very natural. Like everything. <laughs> I don't know. It just uh, it's a nice day, <laughs> um, but um, yeah. So that's what I meant to talk about today. You know, everybody matters. You have to be nice to everybody because everybody matters. Even the even the security guard downstairs really really matters. <laughs> even the guard downstairs really really matters. <laughs> You don't have to be nice to everybody. It's very important. So that's why I make a point of being nice to every single person. Even when I was young in my twenties, everybody, you know. So yeah, that's um. <sighs> okay. Well, I mean, if I sit at home and it makes my neck hurt, I may as well stand outside for. A little while longer, but I was wondering what my parents would think had I said that to them. Which often I can't talk directly in their face, so you know. But yeah, I don't like playing the piano very much. I just want two or three showy pieces and play them once a year. But I don't really want to become like some sort of a famous pianist or something. It's very lonely, you know. It's just you and the piano, and you have to work for hours. Um, well, I have a lot to do. Well, no, I don't have anything to do. That's the best thing about it. But I have to just go home and take a break and rest a bit. So, I mean, it's best to it's best to request to do as little as possible. The less you have to do, the more you can do. The less. You have to do the more you end up doing. So I always ask to do the the less the lesser thing. You know, just uh, sit down. Just you know, just things will happen. It depend depending on the kind of person you are. Things would happen for you no matter what. So you should always ask to do the least. But um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit down. Sit, I'm gonna go sit down for a while. I was really being very honest today. <laughs> it's really what I was thinking. <laughs> All right. So I was just thinking. Um, well, I mean, I know I live in the United States, but Asians are. Pretty popular, depending on how American how American you are, um, and I know they're you know, I mean Americans like Asian Asian people. I saw um, Fan Bingbing at a um, Louis Vuitton uh, party celebration, and you know I grew up in Hong Kong, and I love you know Tony Leung, Andy Lau. Um, I love that movie um, with um, Ann Lee as the uh, director, and there was there was uh, Tony Leung and Tang Wei, and they were getting into an affair. That was a that was a good movie, and I think Tang Wei is also she's very elegant. And you know, there's another one, Li Bing Bing. She looks like the twin of Fan Bing Bing, and they're both so gorgeous, and they're very very popular too regular people to American people um, so I mean I think there are things for Asian people to do living 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 away um, in the States and you know I mean if you're if you're approved like like uh, Chinese people think you're you're a nice good little panda um, and you're so you're accepted by the Chinese, then you really have no trouble uh, going anywhere, um, you know. Because if you're if you're some Asian, I don't know, coming from London, but Chinese people don't don't uh, they they won't allow it. They have a system. They either say yes or no. If the Chinese people say no to you, then you can't uh, you can't uh, get ahead. 
Uh, in the States, I guess mainly it's a language issue, cultural issue, but it's also about street smarts, like how how good your social skills are, how many good friends did you make when uh, when, when you go out living in the States. Um, I'm very comfortable in the States, more, more so than I am in Hong Kong. Mm. But Hong Kong is like a tiny little kingdom. Um, and it's it's my kingdom, like I'm the little girl here. There's no way anyone can hurt me here, but I'm just completely miserable. And in the States, it's something else. Um, you know, I just dress down a bit. I dress down a bit. I um, I have tons of friends from Harvard, from from Andover, from from every place I go. I meet people even when I go out, got up, go out to a party. I dated a guy who died, unfortunately, but uh, he he was a DJ and a doctor and a pianist. He's uh, he was good friends with Stephen Huff. They would smoke and drink in his apartment in New York twice a week. Um, but yeah, so I was thinking maybe, I, I, I don't know, I, I don't want to become a movie actor. I'm very honest, I couldn't lie, I'm too lazy to remember my lines, um, so I'm not going to do that. Mm, but something that, just something like where I can get in front of people, which is why I thought being a brand ambassador would be a good idea. Mm, I honestly think what I what I put on my skin or I honestly feel what I'm wearing is very very nice so that's that's what I think I mean I'm, I'm kind of lucky because Chinese people like me and American people love me um, so I'm, I'm pretty safe uh, my passport you know if I don't break a law it's uh, I have a pass American passport forever um, and I don't even have to renew it for another 10 years. Uh, I just renewed it last year. So that's my life. I'm going to be living back in New York. And I'm just, uh, well, sort of asking my parents what, um, what, how they feel about what, what, I, what I should be doing, what I like to do. Mm, you know? I mean, probably I'd like to end up being with a guy and getting married because I always end up, I don't know, I mean, I just get snatched up and then I end up living with somebody. But um, I just like the boyfriend to be a really nice one. Mm. Uh, nothing, nothing special, nothing more special than, um, nothing more special than just... Uh, how how uh, how my parents um, want it? How my parents uh, how my parents always design wanted it by design. Um, you know, um, they tell they tell their uh, they tell their family relatives to uh, portray um, uh, my expectations. Um, they have a fixed idea that it that life really shouldn't feel very special. I shouldn't have great expectations, you know. They told me very clearly, don't you think you're going to be anything more than maybe a Blake Lively if you're very, very good and you're very, very lucky. You know, don't, don't start thinking up random things like Natalie Portman. You know, Michelle Pfeiffer, don't be crazy. If you're a really, really good kid, you might become something like a Blake Lively. But at this point, you're not lively. You're just like me. Um, and that's, uh, that's, all you, that's all that you are. You're just likely. You're not yet even lively. You know, whether you get there or not is dependent on whether you, we beat you with a stick um, but if that's how strict they are about even me, uh, what kind of a good boy I end up with, um, pretty much, uh, they have a fixed idea and then they, I guess they find the boy with that, with that, uh, picture 
in in their mind. Someone who really loves me and doesn't, you know, is not very special. Uh, and comes home every day and uh, goes out with me. Um, you know, maybe you might see him going out more. You know, to to our parties. Uh, he doesn't do much on his own. He's uh, just in love, and he has a nice, stable job. And there's really nothing weird about him. And there's no other woman he thinks of in his life. Um, if he's divorced, he's a single dad. That's okay, but that's okay if there are no problems, none whatsoever. He doesn't complain. He just adores me. Tells everybody that, you know, it's it's how it's how my my mom and dad have been. Portraying that, whether through pictures or you know, asking asking uh, uh, their their bankers, asking their workers to put pictures on Facebook, um, on the newspaper, uh, to to portray to portray just just like that. Well, because that—that's how my parents feel. They feel life shouldn't shouldn't be uh, crazy. You shouldn't be, uh, think that you're really famous. You shouldn't spend lots and lots of money on crazy things. That's not. That's they just feel you should be down to earth, and so that's that's why they. That's why it's like this. But um, hmm. it's just very nice lighting out here. I mean, I guess the reason I'm considered a good kid is I don't, I don't feel, I don't think too differently from them. I don't, I don't think my life should be that, uh, that special either. You know, I went to school and I had so, I was so popular in school as an Asian kid, but living in America. Because I, because, I think it's partly because I don't think life should be very special. You know, there'd be some Asian kids who like move out of the dorms, you know, spend a bunch of money on a big apartment and, you know, while they're going to school uh, or eat out every night. And I was very American because I sit in the dorm and I'd have dinner with my with my American friends, whites, blacks, Hispanics, all of them and, and Asians. And we'd have dinner like at 530 every night in the Elliott House dining hall and so you saw everybody there you know like all the people like a lot of big names the famous actors people who become famous actors famous dancers famous doctors famous lawyers everybody was there but you had to go to dinner every night at 5 30 and you had to eat American food and you had to speak American English and you don't have too much makeup on your face and I just wear normal, you know, clothing. I was a little bit fashion, you know, fashiony, very girly, but not too crazy. Um, absolutely, you know, people had no idea I came from Hong Kong. Even my closest friends, they'd be like, "Oh yeah, we remember you said that's where you're from." But people just thought I was like some kid who grew up in New York, you know, like I don't know. <laughs> just uh, it's um. That's how our life is. But that's why I, I just, I have the same view as my parents. That you, it's okay to just have dinner with your friends at 5.30 every single day of the week. And life shouldn't be very special. Uh, I mean, it would be nice to go to fashion shows all the time. But maybe not wearing a different dress every night maybe buy one nice dress and wear it oh many times to many different dinners uh, not not too crazy not too spoiled or... i mean it's uh it's how i am it's how we are
I never overspent my pocket money as a kid. My sister did. The first time she got a big, a bigger sum of pocket money, she spent it all in a couple of months, and it made my dad go ape shit. He was really angry with her. It never happened with me. Mm. It never happened with me. No, excuse me. It never happened with me. Um, in high school, I got like. Um, they just put five thousand dollars into my. It's called Bank of Bank Boston back then. It's now it's Bank of America back then. Bank Boston, and they he just put in five thousand dollars in my bank account. Mm. I went to Boston a lot. I mean, I bought a lot of slutty. The reason I could buy slutty clothes as a teenager is because I went to boarding school and my mom wasn't following what I wore every day. But I wasn't. I didn't go crazy. I never ran out. I never ran out of money the way my sister did, like in a couple months, and she didn't even get five thousand. She got like only three, and she didn't get a credit card. I did. I got a gold. I got an American Express gold card, on top of the the separate the, the five thousand dollars in the bank Boston account. And I didn't go crazy with it. I didn't. I didn't uh, buy anything bad or. I didn't smoke in high. I didn't smoke in high school. I didn't, and I well, the, I had an Asian boyfriend, and we started really early. And he didn't like to smoke. He just liked to make out and you know have sex and stuff. But um, other than my high school sweetheart, I didn't have Asian friends. But I had tons of like white friends, Hispanic friends. I did every kind of club, every kind of thing. But um. So yeah, I didn't spend all that pocket money because I was busy going out with my friends, do uh, doing stuff with my friends. But um, but we bought, but I still bought pretty expensive clothes for a teenager, just because I was living away from home, so I had an allowance. Um, and my parents believe, my parents believe in buying good quality clothing. Like even when I was a kid, I had really nice clothes. Um, and my mom and dad really believe in buying expensive clothes, even for young kids. You know, some people think if you're a teenager, you shouldn't have a, spend spend on you know brand name clothing. But mm, like they got, you know, I was a pianist and I performed, and they made lots of nice dresses. And like for my prom, like we had like um, I went with my parents to buy my prom dress, and we got like two, and then we got two prom dresses, and then we got one, we got we got it from the Kenneth, you know, back then it was Kenneth Cole, and my mom and dad were with me, and we bought the Kenneth Cole like the the bridal collection. Yeah, I was only like seventeen or sixteen, and my parents got me the Kenneth Cole bridal collection <laughs> for my for my prom. Just, I mean, I guess I don't know for kid for American kids, a high school prom is the it's the biggest event in your life. Um, you know, second only to your marriage. It's your wedding day. It's first. It's your wedding day, and after that, it's your high school prom. It was a big deal for us, and. You know, my parents. Well, my parents thought Alan was a very handsome guy, so you know we should uh, make the most of it and get a nice dress. And my mom actually said he was handsome. <laughs> um, he was. He's very hot for an Asian, and he was. Um, he was in the wrestling team. He was on the wrestling team, but then he was. Uh, he also became the captain of the volleyball team which he started but he was he was also on the wrestling team um, and he was a year below me in high school it's really funny because uh, Terry Chang who's a very good friend of mine um, likes to visit the, um, the boys clubs at Harvard with me and we went to there was one in particular that I love and um, we would go there, and once I met a guy there at the club that I like, and he was from another boys' club. 
Um, we, went, we went on a date, and he was really hot. He's um, also a year below me, like Alan was, and he was also on the wrestling team at Harvard. And I just forgot his I forgot his uh, name. I just forgot his name. So one day, someone will have to remind me. Terry or somebody will have to tell me what his name is. But I remember the voice. I remember how his voice is. So. Like when I hear, you know, like a podcast and it's it's his voice, I I think of him. I just can't remember his name. We just went on a date and he's nice. He was from another boys club. So, so I don't know much about his background because he's from another boys club. Um, it's the one that Jared Kushner was also um, a member of. And he's in the same class as Jared, who I've never met. And I'm not very familiar with that boys club. I'm from I like I'm familiar with the one I I like to to go to go to. Um, well, yeah. I wonder how maybe if I met up with them, we could actually start dating and try something. You know, we're adults now, and it's so interesting because it was the same, it was the same year and the same sport. Since he's very, he was very blonde. He was very, I think, was very built. But um, you know, I just, uh, I wonder, like, and how I can be so forgetful. I, I uh, really, really forgot his name. I forgot his first name and I forgot his last name. Um, I just. Uh, I know I'm not the smartest person for Harvard standards, but I ought to remember names of people who, who I I like. And but I really forgot his name. Um, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people ask me out once, and I don't remember every name. But Terry will will tell me, or somebody in the the club I like will will tell me after the pandemic. I don't know how much I'm gonna know, but I'd like the I'd like I'd like you know these people. I'd like the at least the boys in the club I like um, to be back in my life after after um, the pandemic. You know, it's just you know. But uh, Terry's better with names and stuff, and it was um, well behaved. It's uh, a lot often it's just you know like at harvard people like to just ask out a girl like sometimes you just ask a girl to a formal because you think she's pretty you just go to a dance and you kiss and something it's uh, very typical for harvard but um, i just i should remember the name um, i mean i got asked out to lots of dances and stuff but i should remember the names of each person um, His name I really forgot. I'm not. Uh, I really, I really forgot his name. Mm. Well, I've been talking for a while now, which is, you know, normally when I'm out with friends, I'm not the only person talking nonstop. You know. I'm a good listener, so. But um, if it's easy for me to remind my friends that I'm still alive right now, and my parents are hard to talk to because they keep interrupting me and they have loud voices, you know, maybe somebody can see my videos out there. Whew. Anyways, I'm gonna go home now. It's such a nice day. I mean, it's, I may as well um, go home, go home soon, you know, rather than staying out here for longer. Mm -hmm. so.